Hey guys, welcome back to the Lily Knits YouTube channel. If you've ever wanted to crochet a top but felt a bit intimidated, then I have the perfect easy pattern for you. This simple v-neck crop top is super fun to make and perfect for the summer. If you're not a fan of short crop tops, then you can easily modify it to make it longer and cover more of your midriff. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of making this top in the size extra small, but you can find the pattern for all sizes on my website, which I've linked to in the description. To make this top, you will need a DK weight yarn, a size E4 or 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. If you didn't catch all of that, don't worry, as I've listed them with the pattern and also in the description for this video. I know that many of my followers are new to crochet, so I created this loose fitting top to be beginner friendly. The entire project is worked flat. We will crochet two identical panels, one for the front of the body and one for the back, from the bottom up and then sew them together at the shoulder and side seams. We will begin by making our foundation chain. To make the foundation chain, make a slip knot and then insert the hook into the slip knot. Yarn over and pull through a loop to make the first chain. We will continue chaining until we have 66 chains for the size extra small. Okay, now that we have the foundation chain complete, we can begin row one. For row one, make a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. To make a half double crochet, we yarn over and insert our hook into the chain. We then yarn over and pull through a loop, and then yarn over and pull through the remaining loops on the hook. We then begin our repeat, which is two half double crochets in the next chain, followed by skipping the chain immediately after. So we continue with the repeat until there is just one more chain remaining. Half double crochet in the last chain and then chain two and turn. So that's the end of the first row, and if we count the half double crochets, there should be 64, which is just 66 from our foundation chain, minus the two that we skipped from the first half double crochet. Row two is pretty much exactly like row one, except we crochet into the half double crochets from the previous row instead of into the foundation chain. Begin by working the first half double crochet into the first half double crochet of the previous row. And now we begin our repeat, just like for row one. So we make two half double crochets in the next stitch and then skip the stitch immediately after.
Continue all the way down until the last stitch and then work your last half double crochet in the last stitch. Chain 2 and turn. Repeat row 2 until you have a total of 17 rows. Remember that I'm making a size extra small top, so if you're working on a different size, then you'll be crocheting more rows. This is the part of the top that will cover your midriff, so if you'd like to make your top longer to cover the entire midriff, then you can crochet as many rows as you think you'll need. Just hold the material directly under your bust line to see how long you'd like it. At the end, we will crochet a trim that adds about a half an inch too, so keep that in mind when you're deciding on how many rows to crochet. Now that we've completed all of the rows for the bottom portion of the top, we're ready to work on shaping the bust area and straps. The first thing we need to do is divide the number of stitches by two and mark the last stitch on the right side. In this case, the last stitch is 32 stitches in since we had a total of 64 stitches. So I'll take a stitch marker and place it in the 32nd stitch. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use another strand of yarn or a safety pin or anything else you can attach to your work to just mark that stitch. At the end of our last row, instead of chaining two, we chained one before turning our work because we're beginning the first row shaping. So we're going to slip stitch in the first four stitches to shape under the arm. We then make our first half double crochet in the next stitch and begin the same repeat that we've been using throughout the pattern until we reach the end of the right side which is marked by our marker. Again, we chain one instead of two before turning since the next row also begins with a slip stitch. Row two begins with a slip stitch in the first two stitches to shape the neckline. Half double crochet in the next stitch and begin the pattern repeat until the last half double crochet of the previous row. Half double crochet in the last half double crochet, chain one and turn. Continue following the pattern rows for shaping the top right. I'm not going to go over each row in detail, but we are using slip stitches to decrease in shape along the underarm and neckline.
Eventually, there'll only be eight stitches remaining for the shoulder straps. Work a few more rows as outlined in the pattern and fasten off. Now that we have the right side shaped, all we have left to do is shape the left side. We attach our yarn in the next stitch after the stitch marker and chain two. We then work our first half double crochet in the same stitch and begin our pattern repeat until we have 5 stitches remaining. Now that there are 5 stitches remaining, we work our last half double crochet in the next stitch, chain 2, and turn. So we're essentially skipping the remaining 4 stitches to start shaping under the arm. For row 2, we start off just like a regular row and half double crochet in the first stitch. We then begin our pattern repeat and continue until there are 3 stitches remaining. At this point, we work our last half double crochet in the next stitch and chain 2 and turn our work. By skipping the last 2 stitches, we begin shaping the neckline on the left side. So we are basically mirroring what we did on the right side and instead of using slip stitches, we are skipping the remaining stitches to shape the underarm area and neckline. Continue following the pattern rows for shaping the top left. Like the right side, eventually there will only be 8 stitches remaining for the strap. Work the remaining rows to finish off the strap and fasten off. We have now completed our first panel. I'll create an identical second panel and then meet you back to seam the panels together. I'm back with my two body panels that are ready to be joined. I've laid one panel on top of the other with the right sides together. So if you're wondering which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side, it doesn't really matter with this stitch, but if you've weaved your ends in on one side, then that would be your wrong side because you want to hide that side. And just as I'd mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're going to connect the panels together at the shoulder and side seams using a whip stitch. Simply line up your edges and using a threaded needle whip stitch your seams together for both shoulders and both sides. I had left a longer piece of yarn when fastening off my shoulder seams so I just used those to thread my needle.
We are almost done. The last thing we need to do is add the bottom edging. Pick a spot in the center of the crop top along the foundation chain and join your yarn into the foundation chain. Chain 1 and single crochet into the same stitch. We are now going to work all the way around with single crochet stitches into each chain of the foundation chain. At the end of the round, join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. Chain 2 and half double crochet in the same stitch. Work one round of half double crochet in each single crochet to complete the trim. At the end of the round, join to the first half double crochet with a slip stitch and fasten off. Your crop top is now complete. Weave in any loose ends and enjoy. Thanks for watching my video demo of how to make this super cute loose fitting crop top. Don't forget that you can find the full pattern written out for free on the Lily Knits website.